Thank you, Lonnie, and we are very proud, right, Claudia? Oh, we are extremely proud. How proud are we? We're excited. We're excited? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I think Tell the, them why. The, the most excited? Ever. Okay. Because we have not the vulnerable, no. but the venerable. <laughs> Sometimes vulnerable. vulnerable, but mostly do you vulnerable. Have a vulnerable side? Yes, I do. <laughs> Can we talk about it? I just, I just want to do this though, real quick. Emerald ash borer. <laughs> you have the emerald in your <laughs> ash tree. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make an ash yourself. Yeah, I'm really. trying not to. Okay, really. but I'm branching out in yeah. a new oh, field. There we go. Uh, you just leave it alone. Will you? <laughs> oh. This is rooted in something really crazy. Oh my gosh, we're oh, going to puns this early <laughs> in the show. Oh my god. All right, so. Um, I'm Tony. I'm Claudia. You are? Mike Kaplan. And who's that lovely lady next to you? I'm Laura Kaplan. There we go. And do you know why you're here, Laura? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> well, you got married. <laughs> that gonna... was your first mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After that? It's been downhill since then. So, um, did you always have a, uh, a predilection for meteorologists? Like, is Mike your first meteorologist he boyfriend? He is my very first meteorologist, <laughs> absolutely. So the last. It's like Jerry Taft wasn't <laughs> your first, and then it didn't work out, and then you no. thought, well, who's next? And Mike came along. Mike came yeah. along. <laughs> right. well, and he looked vulnerable. And he looked vulnerable. <laughs> That's so, right. Yeah. So you made him venerable. Anyhow, I'm Tony. This is Claudia. Our phone number is... Area code 619-924-0952 for all our live custo live customers, live callers. Um, if you're dead, um, just email your questions in. Uh, we are broadcasting live from Base Camp, which is on uh, the first floor of Ecolo the Ecology, lower level of Ecology, Ecology Sports, Sports in lovely... Sister Bay, Wisconsin. And where's this located? Door County. And Door County is what? It's that the thumb, peninsula. The peninsula. <laughs> I didn't thumb. know there was going to be a test I <laughs> yes. would have studied. Yes. Yeah. And so. Um, I just want to say that when I was invited to come to base camp, I thought we were going to Mount Everest <laughs> or something for the show. <laughs> yeah. So right. I love Door County. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But you there got nervous. <laughs> there will be a Sherpa. So is that will, uh, why you're dressed in the gear that you're wearing? Exactly. Right now? Okay, exactly. got it now. That explains a lot. And take the spikes off. <laughs> stretching the floor. All right, so let's get into some weather here, Mike. Sure. Okay. So what is it about weather that is the most common reason why people tune into the television news? I think because it affects everybody in some way. Uh, as you and I were talking about a little bit before the show began, uh, it'd be very hard pressed in my opinion to find someone who doesn't have at least a minor interest in what the weather's going to be. Whether it's mom wanting to know what to put on her kids as she sends them off for school in the morning. Whether it is a, a farmer in Kankakee County who wants to know uh, is he going to be able to get his uh, crop mm -hmm. harvested or not because there's so much rain out there. Uh, is it somebody who's trying to decide whether to take the train or drive in because of the timing of the sure. two inches of snow hitting right at rush hour? I think it is a still very uh, driving importance in uh, media, uh, particularly television news. Uh, they people want to know what's that weather going to be. So, you know, we I've been listen, I'm a news junkie. Mm -hmm. So I, first thing I do when I go into a new city is I tune in the six o'clock or ten o'clock news, and knowing uh, the news up here in Wisconsin, uh, W B A Y, uh, George uh, Graffis. Do you know listen. George? Do you know I do him? not. Okay. You know George? Um, he's like what was the guy from the '60s that you liked? A uh, P J Hoff. Kind of like a P J Hoff type. In his demeanor. In his demeanor. He doesn't draw. Yeah. P J Hoff used to draw I caricatures. See. Yeah. And they lead with Storm Central. Mm-hmm. And it could be 73 degrees sunny, sunny. <laughs> a breeze out of the southwest, and we're leading with storm central. Yeah. I mean, first but I of all, love that. there's no storm. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the part. It's a storm of partly cloudy. Yes. Come on, Tony. <laughs> you know, we forgot that's the part we left out. <laughs> so is it our fear factor also that, sure. I, that we need to be prepared? Yes. Um, is it the milk and bed, bread? you know, gets sold out the first when there's an inch of snow coming? I grew up in the Chicago area, but I spent six years forecasting in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And I found out very quickly that the mere specter of a snowstorm would send people Stop flocking them. to Kroger and Food Lion <laughs> to buy milk 
and bread. And so I actually had somebody make me a graphic. It was called the Loafometer. Ah. It was a loaf of bread with a smiley face on it and a yeah. dial. Right. And awesome. depending on how much, you know, how many flurries we were going to get, we would determine whether it's a two loafer, right. a three loafer. Uh, so def there is a, uh, I think you need to have a healthy respect for weather. Uh, many people fear it. There is a big number of people who are absolutely phobic mm -hmm. about weather. I get mm -hmm. written uh, a lot, yeah, a mm -hmm. lot on our Facebook page about people. You know, hey, my my daughter's just absolutely petrified every time that a thunderstorm comes. What are we going to do? Um, so I think people have uh, varying degrees of either healthy respect or just you know absolute fear of it. And in the media, uh, in order to help drive viewers or listeners, uh, it helps to tap into that. You have to balance being responsible with being alarming. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that is I, a, that's a tricky balance. Yes. And I think that a lot of times the pendulum has swung too to far the, to being oh, alarming. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, agree. Um, I agree. So you think wearing the pith helmet during the <laughs> broadcast is a little overkill? or? I mean, you think it's appropriate. In your case, I'd go with the pit helmet. you go with the pit <laughs> helmet. Okay. And how do you feel when they say, they kind of like make it the responsibility of the weatherman, like, nice going, Kaplan. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, it's like you're in charge of the weather. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah it's your right. fault. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then you're more faulted than you are glorified. Praised. Yeah, mm -hmm. or praised. I mean, do you ever internalize that? I mean, do people really think that you are the weather machine? Yes, but um, more often than not, even if I, on, on those rare occasions in my 30 years of broadcasting mm -hmm. where I may have made a slight error <laughs> in forecasting <laughs> judgment. Very January of 42. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, on those twice. rare occasions where you blow it, and it happens to everybody, um, people tend to be very forgiving mm -hmm. and will tend to... Uh, assess your capability based on long-term performance. Mm -hmm. You may goof up. Well, That's one of the beautiful things about this business, meteorology, mm -hmm. is, is if I get this thing wrong today, I come back tomorrow, and it's it. almost a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Now, if I continue to you know, say it's going to be sunny and 80 and it keeps pouring day mm -hmm. after day after day, people are going to pretty soon go, They're gonna this, lose their what does this guy know? Trust right? in you, yeah. right. So over the long term... Do you think people it, remember? Yes. Really? Yes, absolutely. So they're clinging on to what you said yesterday, and they're and they're not writing it down. But I mean, they're remembering that if you nailed it or not. Hashtag sure. Mike said it would be like this. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so yeah. has social media made your business more um, accountable? I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly interactive. Uh, when it was just stand in the studio and talk to a camera and a couple of people in the studio. Um, the opportunity for any immediate or at least quasi-immediate feedback just wasn't or there. engagement, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, right. you throw something out on Facebook, it's whether immediate. it's a forecast or whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, I'm going to show a radar picture. People are saying, yeah, Mike, we got the, yeah. you, the hail is here in Crystal Lake. And they're Lake. sending in pictures. Right, yeah. exactly. So, it, it, that so you is have your little eye reporters out there? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, and there are, there are some people that I really I rely on regularly because they do such a fantastic job. And actually, job. you're really good. So, you know, I, we didn't get a chance to say this before, but Mike Kaplan is the is Facebook's meteorologist. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just hands down, he is it. Well, thank and, you. Yeah. And, and, you, and he's not so bad on Twitter either. <laughs> I just wanted to add that. And, and the reason I think that you have gained so much popularity is because you have the understanding of engagement down pat. So you don't just act like the know-it-all meteorologist. You actually ask your audience for in, in input and information. Hey, how's it doing in blah, blah, right. blah. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you do know who your people are, so they will respond to you. You know you can rely on certain people. So um, I think it's fabulous, and, and I think that is the way of the future in terms of, well, I think you guys were talking about it earlier about news, but certainly in weather, um, the immediacy of social media in how people respond and look to it, it's Well, you mentioned the normal. engagement levels, mm -hmm. and, and Laura was right on the top of this. When uh, when Channel 7 let me go, we knew we wanted to keep my name out there sure. right. and and try and uh, foment an even bigger right. audience for what I would do in the future. Sure. So we continue Which, to do that. Yes, and she learned. You thank you. And she learned very quickly to... Uh, you know, get the shares and the yeah. likes and the comments and respond. Absolutely, and respond yeah. Yeah. because there's lots of ways on social media that you can gain um, recognition. But it's the people like yourself 
selves that are engaging back, responding, that's why you grow. Yes. That's why you're mm -hmm. so popular. Mm -hmm. You could be the most awesome me meteorologist in the world, and if you aren't responding to your listeners or your, your audience, they're going to give you up and go someplace else. Right. So this you is guys a are great at it. This is a complete team effort. It is. It's not just Mike and I. It's everybody on our Facebook page sure. interacting, sharing, and, and liking, what, commenting. 17,000 yeah, followers? Quite a few Close to 14,000. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. after today. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. today. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, I, but, yeah. But you know, see, I'm always, I like predictions. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and if you knew that or not, I'm predicting sure. after this show, there will be 17,000 followers. Fabulous. Let's make it happen. And a half an inch of rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of social media, Dean Richards, mm -hmm. our friend from Chicago, mm -hmm. Chicago WGN Radio, said he's up to like 11 o'clock at night after he gets home from the studio answering those comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it harder today to be in the public eye than ever because of social media? Probably. More time consuming? More yes. time consuming. Um, and like I said, I think it's also a little more rewarding. Um, in the old days, you might get a handful of letters or a few phone calls, but when you've got hundreds of people making comments and or asking questions mm -hmm. that you uh, you want to at least acknowledge, hey, thanks for that, or you know, uh, what you, you said that picture, what town was that from mm -hmm. of that funnel cloud that you said? So it's, I think, uh, incumbent upon someone that wants to have some success in social media to really uh, massage that audience and keep them engaged. Don't just be a, uh, a, a megaphone yeah. mm -hmm. out there. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sending my message out there right. and you know, take it for what you want and uh, whatever you write back, I'm, I don't care. That's mm -hmm. not going to work. Mm -hmm. And speaking of just the way the message is delivered, it's mostly in the past been delivered uh, via television. Now we have all these weather apps. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, television market dying a slow death when it comes to uh, local weather uh, broadcasting? Well, TV news in general, whether it is at the local level or at the national level, is struggling. You know, the days of uh, making profits hand over fist, uh, they're gone. TV can still be profitable, but it's just not the, the Taj Mahal of money making mm -hmm. uh, that it used to be. Um, TV stations are having a much more difficult time trying to remain competitive with a vast and growing uh, competitive market on the internet. Uh, it's not just I'm fighting channel 67 across the street for the audience. Now I got to fight Facebook, I got to fight Twitter, I got to fight all the other internet sources for whether it's weather, whether it's news, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and, and the other thing that you have to do is, as a station, you have to have your own Facebook presence. You have to have your own social media and your web thing. And, and oftentimes, that can be at odds. Uh, if, I want, uh, to, if I want you to watch my 6 o'clock show, and I put out my forecast at 445 on social media, mm -hmm. how many of those people are going to feel the need to right. tune in at 6 o'clock? Right. So you what have a balance. To, yeah, yeah. you got to say, well, I want to give people, i, I got to serve them because yeah. they, they're out there, they want that stuff. If I'm not, if I'm not giving them what they want, mm -hmm. they're going to go to another channel and get it. Mm -hmm. But you kind of want to uh, tease, tease them. Mm -hmm. a little bit as opposed Throw to giving the full out there, yeah. right. Storm right. Central. Yeah, Storm That's Central. Right. That's right. <laughs> and yeah. is there, a, the news seems to be coming on sooner and sooner. I mean, so four o'clock is it's kind of a, all day now. a new, yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. especially locally. Mm -hmm. So you can watch it from five in the morning or four, which Chicago news come on? Four thirty, five thirty, four thirty, mm -hmm. and it's on until 10. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it depends on the station. WGN. Uh, yeah, they're on later. Uh, yeah. Most of the uh, the network affiliates are done at 9 so that they can, uh, well, they do a, a 4.30 to 7, and then they have either Today's Show mm -hmm. or Good Morning America, what have you. Uh, and then they'll still do the local cut-ins between 7 and 9. Right. And then most stations are trying to do some sort of a noon broadcast. Then you got a, right. you know, a 4, 5, 6. Right. Uh, it's a very competitive marketplace. and you. So who's listening? Is it anybody over 60? I mean, am I the uh, target audience here? The, the, the big audience is over 60. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, definitely well, skews old. Uh, skews I old. used to be a bigger audience, but I gave up sugar and white <laughs> no. bread. I'm a, I'm a smaller You're a audience. You're a smaller audience. Yeah, a smaller audience. But um, that, that being said, all right, so let's talk about weather. Okay. 
right, Haven't so. we already been talking about weather? No, oh, we oh, just a little like, bit, a little yeah, bit. The, uh, no, I mean actual weather. Can we just interject that yes, we sure. are at base camp in Door we County? We are. And, and who are we again? You. Oh, we are going home with Tony. Yes, right. But we want to thank Joelle Kersabe and yes. also Alicia Kersabe, who owns Ecology Sports upstairs. Which is, I think, uh, uh, Tracy and uh, yeah, Laura did a little shopping. Yeah, yeah they, apparently I've made thank a donation to, the, to their <laughs> retirement fund. You should thank for thank Bill for pulling me out. Though. <laughs> it could oh, have been worse. Well, yeah, which you're getting paid to be on the show will more than compensate. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. right. By the way, check is in the mail. <laughs> All right, so 20 years ago, July was it? Of 95. What yes. was that mm -hmm. date? Mm -hmm. The 12th through 16th. And what happened? Uh, deadliest heat wave in Chicago history. You mm -hmm. had uh, a really unusual combination of hot temperatures and very high dew points, which is a measure Humidity. of how much and moisture is in the air. Just explain that for a minute okay. because, um, you know, we, we, we hear the dew point. Mm -hmm. It seems yeah. to be like like a new thing that they talk about more now than I ever And then everybody them. says, oh yeah, dew point. Like Here, know. Uh, very simple. <laughs> Let's Dew point is a measure of how much moisture is in the air. If I have a dew point of 60 degrees, that means that if I get the temperature, the actual air temperature to 60 degrees, I have 100% humidity. Now here's where the dew point is more valuable than relative humidity. Let's say on a day where um, we have a dew point of 60 degrees and the air temperature is 61. That means the relative humidity is 97%. Wow, that sounds really humid, doesn't it? 97% does. right. humidity. If I take that exact same air mass with that 60 degree dew point and heat it up to 90 degrees, the relative humidity is going to be about 26% or something like mm. that. That's like, you know, desert almost type right. stuff. So the amount of moisture that was in the air stayed the same. The relative humidity number changed. And I have always found that the RH is misleading because so many people think that just because you have high relative humidity, that means the air is humid. Well, you can have 100% humidity and it's 27 degrees outside and that air is really, really dry. Huh. Um, and as you know, could you have 100% <laughs> humidity with 27 degrees? Sure. Is that it happens all fog? the time. No, not necessarily. You don't have to necessarily have any precipitation at that point, but you would have dew, or in this case, you'd have some frost. So, all right, so then let's talk about fog. How does fog happen? Fog is a cloud on the ground, several different ways of forming that. You can have uh, clear skies, light winds at night, moisture uh, begins to condense close to the ground, creates a, a little a ground cloud, a little stratus cloud close mm -hmm. to the ground. You can have a marine layer. Uh, it's not going to happen that often uh, in Chicago unless you're close to the lake or here in Door County. Uh, sometimes you'll get some cooler air blowing in off the lake. That will also condense out into a cloud and produce uh, the fog there. Uh, so there are several different mechanisms for fog. Formation. What causes the fog to evaporate? Uh, typically it is the heat from the sun. It'll cause it to the, the mixing of the air causes the fog to more or less burn off. Uh, the, one of the ways it was described many years ago, fog is lifting. That's mm -hmm. not really the case. Oh, no. it, it, it's it, burning. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's more, yeah, it's being evaporated by the heat. Mm -hmm. So getting back to summer of 95. Yes, you had five days in a row of uh, temperatures close to or above 100 degrees. I think midway was uh, about 106 with a heat index of 121 degrees. We had dew points up around oh, you 80. You threw another term in, heat index. Yeah, that's the summertime equivalent of wind chill. Mm -hmm. uh, body's ability to cool itself through um, perspiration is impacted by how much moisture is in the air. Is if it it's drier, the more moisture, the harder it is to correct, cool yourself? Correct, mm -hmm. because you won't evaporate as quickly. If you're out in Arizona and you have that very low dew point air mm -hmm. and you sweat, uh, it's a very effective cooling mm -hmm. mechanism. So you had close to 700 people in Chicago that perished. Wow. Uh, I about that. Many of them uh, were infirm in some way. Yeah, already elderly or had respiratory mm -hmm. problems. It's not like mm -hmm. people uh, jog. Yeah, yeah, you know, 25 right. year old joggers mm -hmm. were collapsing. You know, I'm sure there were some, but uh, this was mostly in, uh, impacting people. Well, who we were did have from. a situation in Chicago. Our daughter ran the, one of the marathons. Right. Yes. And that right. was off the charts. I mean, mm -hmm. they had to yeah. stop the marathon. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was like 96 degrees right. and mm -hmm. high yeah, humidity. Very dangerous. Right. And uh, people were uh, passing out. So when you see a weather front forming on the uh, Washington state of Washington coast. Okay. Coming in off the Pacific. Coming off the Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest. Mm -hmm. 
how do you, in how many days, by the way, will it take for that to hit the Midwest? Depends on the strength of the jet stream. Anywhere typically from two to three days. And um, how do you know? So you're looking at this weather front moving in on the uh, Cascade Mountains. Okay. And you're going to tell me on Thursday, I need to bring an umbrella <laughs> <laughs> at, at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, it's not just the Pacific Northwest. It might be something that's forming in the Canadian prairies. Uh, you know, in the winter time, we talk about Alberta clippers yeah. coming in. So uh, there are various source regions for uh, storm systems to uh, to develop, and so we use computer modeling to analyze the atmosphere. A lot of this is based on uh, the what are called Raywind Sand observations mm -hmm. a couple times a day at dozens of sites around the country. Balloons oh, are released okay. to sample the atmosphere oh, on their way up at various altitudes. You get wind, pressure, humidity, temperature, the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. And that is all fed into supercomputers which generate the model data that we use to uh, assist us with our forecasting. Model data has gotten much better in the 30 years that I've been doing uh, forecasting. It's still not a perfect science, and that's one of the reasons why uh, forecasters with local experience tend to be the ones who are successful. Right. If you plopped me right. into Denver, Colorado, you and said, for a while. "Yeah," and said, yeah. "Mike, here, here are the here are the models. Take a look at right. that. What's the weather going to be like?" I would be not as comfortable right. as I am taking a look at, at what's going on. At least for a while. Yeah, that's right. It'd take mm -hmm. me a while to mm -hmm. learn what, oh, well, I remember a couple of years ago right. when this it's very it's same thing happened right. and, they, you know, right. and it didn't happen the way the computer, so. Um, Do you ever go against the computer? A lot. A lot. A lot. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, Successfully? Uh, Yes. 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 And does and the there computer remember that and admonish you there, later? There, there. I've had many feuds with the computers. I'm very. I love the European model, by the way. <laughs> and by the way, yes. why is it always the European model? I mean, we have very. I mean, Laura could be the American model. I, mean, I am. I mean, it's just a shame that, that we American have disrespected model. American women as much as we have. <laughs> I'm very upset about that. I mean, in Europe, do they say in the American model? That's right. You know, I bet you they don't. They have a similar antipathy for the you know US model um, the the I go against the models a lot uh, most recently last week uh, back in Chicago the computer models were very emphatic on a big cool down coming we had a very long run of 80 degree yes. days Longest, in Chicago 28 days I think. 28 days it's in the top 10 mm -hmm. of, uh, of 80, de 80 High degree dew point days or range. average dew point mid range it's varied we actually it, we've had a few days that have been humid but a lot of times have not been that humid mm -hmm. um, but the computer models were emphatic in saying that we were going to have a big cool down, especially like next last Tuesday, Wednesday, right. Thursday, highs would be in the 70s. And I went, I said, no way, it's just not going to happen. Wow. And one of, the, one of the things that I used to uh, go against the grain is uh, something I call persistence forecasting. Um, weather patterns tend to develop for a reason, and they tend to lock in. That's why you have droughts. That's why you have flooding. Uh, they eventually switch off. Sure. You got to know when to go against it. But we've been in a, as wet as it was in June. It's been very dry mm -hmm. in July and much of August. So um, knowing that the ground, what we call the antecedent conditions, the pre-existing conditions, that the ground was dry and not as wet as it typically would be. Dry ground heats up more readily than wet ground. I said, I just I think that the, these air masses are going to get warmer than what the computer models are thinking. So I went with you know low 80s. And does the computer know ground temperature? Does it take I mean, that it into will, consideration? It, it will take it into consideration, but not enough. Okay. So, so not we need enough. more thermometers. And so you were <laughs> in right the soil, then? In the yes. Field. So yes. you were right. I got that one right. Knock on wood. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. For you. Uh, the computers. I have a I have a yeah, meteorological please, yeah. question. Mm -hmm. What are isobars? Isobars are lines of equal barometric pressure. Uh, if you look at a conventional surface analysis map, you'll see H's and L's, mm -hmm. highs, highs and, and low lows, pressure. Right. Low pressure is a cyclone, high pressure is an anticyclone. Any low pressure is going to have in the northern hemisphere counterclockwise swirling winds. Conversely, a high has clockwise circulating winds. Um, 
The low pressure is going to be associated generally with uh, adverse weather, could be rain, could be storms, could be snow. Mm -hmm. But the isobars are how quickly that pressure is changing from the high to the low. Mm -hmm. And they're usually measured in millibars. Okay, because uh, some of them are close together and some are farther? Right. Isobars? Okay. Yeah, and that tells right. you how quickly the pressure is changing. Okay. And this well, drives... Really been paying attention. Look at you! Yeah. This drives... I thought you were walking the dog while the weather... Well, Remember, it's after I, the weather. I actually thought I wanted to be a meteorologist at one time. And then you ended up being a media urologist, which is even better. <laughs> All right, who told you? <laughs> That's right. But, but you bring up an interesting point. The, the tightness of those isobars tell you how quickly the pressure is changing, and that leads to more wind. Okay. Wind is air in motion. Wind is always going from high to low pressure and uh, going across those isobars. And uh, so if you look at a map, and you see that web going around the low. Yes, you see a right. lot of lines close together. That's a very intense storm, okay. and it's it's going to have a lot of wind. Okay. All right, so we have a studio audience here today. Yay! So Yay. we're going to measure the uh, metric here by applause. <laughs> How many here really care about the technical side of the report, or just give me the prediction? So who wants just a prediction? I like the technical. Technical. See? Bob, uh, uh, Johnny Ellis. Just, just enough of the technical. Not too right. much. Like, does Tommy Skilling give a little too much information? Oh God, yes. Oh God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because you know, um, I think it's interesting. Evidently, Claudia, I never I've knew. I've been studying. I never she's knew been that, uh, She's been hanging out at the ISO bar. The ISO bar <laughs> was... Uh, Pour me another one, Barbara. Something, yeah, <laughs> something that I need to talk to her about later. Um, all right, so here's a question for you. El Nino or La Nina? They're is, two different things. Is that the big enchilada? <laughs> Listen to you. You're, you're bilingual and you didn't even know it. <laughs> Uh, El Nino and La Nina are two of the. El Nino means uh, the the, sun. the the small one. The, the small, small one. one. Yeah, the, it typically referred to as the Christ Child, where where this uh, takes place. And it's the masculine. Yes. Yes. Okay. As so, opposed to La Nina. So, so tell us about El Nino. El Nino is a warming of the equatorial Pacific waters above what they typically are, and an El Nino event usually. Uh, is, is more prevalent in northern hemisphere winter. The El Nino can have radical impacts on weather all over the world. <coughs> Excuse me. An El Nino right now, which is ongoing, we're in an El Nino now. For how many it's, years? it's ramping up. Well, it kind of was going last year, but it's definitely getting much more noticeable now, and it may impact the winter. But an El Nino uh, this time of year inhibits Atlantic tropical storm activity mm. and it increases Pacific oh, really? okay. tropical storm activity. Um, in the winter time El Nino and this would be a just a boon for California rain. typically delivers a lot more rain and snow to the west coast. Okay. Storm tracks tend to take a more southerly uh, course across the United States. So, so we won't see more snow. That would, that would leave us okay. in the less snowy and generally warmer Which camp. is the one that makes Alaska warm in the winter? Well, that's n not necessarily either one of those. Alaska has had some very warm winters the past sure. couple of years, which are not tied to uh, no. El Nino or La Nina. So the temperature of the Pacific? No, it does. Oh, but, it does. but this is a this is a different part totally of the Pacific. Different. In the Northeast Pacific, as you go all the way up into the Gulf of Alaska and toward the Aleutians, mm -hmm. past couple of years has been uncharacteristically warm. Why? There's been something there that the trade winds. The, the folk no, the folks out there in the West Coast have, have referred to as the ridiculously resilient ridge. It's an area of high pressure that has anchored itself in the Northeast in Pacific. Yeah. <laughs> and that has <laughs> deflected the jet stream to the north in Alaska, which right. allows milder air to come into there. Mm -hmm. Atmosphere wants to balance itself out. So the jet stream starts to kink to the south right. over the eastern two thirds of the United States. And that has been the main contributor to the fact that the past couple of winters have been harsh. Uh, especially here in the Midwest and, you know, East Coast with Boston having, you know, mm -hmm. they only about a month ago did the last of their snow really? finally melt from That's where they had piled cool it up. Statistic. Isn't that just amazing? Oh, my gosh. Um, so there are still indications of unusually warm water in the Northeast Pacific. How that impacts the El Nino that is developing now remains to be seen. 
previous El Ninos, recently such as the 98 El Nino, which was uh, the epic event, uh, there was not this also source of warm water uh, off the Pacific the Northwest. Northwest. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I am very leery of going out on a limb and saying, oh, hey, just because we have what looks like a very strong El Nino, that guarantees mm -hmm. that there's not no going to be, yeah, no, mm -hmm. very and little snow. La, La Nina? The opposite. That would be a cooling of the equatorial Pacific waters, and it uh, has far less of a direct impact on the United States weather. There are some uh, sort of so-so links to things that happen, but uh, particularly here in the Midwest, in a La Nina, you know, forget about making any kind of prediction about the weather. It's just an equal chance it's going to be cold and snowy as it's going to be warm and So is there, snowy. are we always in a La Nina no, or an No, it can be neutral. Not. Oh, it can. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's your six-month prediction for the Midwest? Partly cloudy. Partly cloudy. <laughs> Mostly sunny. With a 30% chance. Mm -hmm. Of something. Of, of something. Exactly. Of isobars. <laughs> oh, how closely are we going to be drinking the isobars? So, I mean, could you look at the Pacific conditions right now and actually come up with a 50-50 prediction of well, what good snow? would that be? Well, what would a 50-50 prediction well, be? Well, half the people will like you, half the people won't. <laughs> yeah. No, and there are so many other indices to look at. There's the North Atlantic Oscillation, the Arctic Oscillation, uh, looking at stratospheric warming events, uh, the various things that really have uh, direct impact on what happens in the winter. Uh, it's not just what's going on with uh, El Nino, mm -hmm. uh, and it's called ENSO, the El Nino and Southern Oscillation, that's the technical term for it. So uh, many other things to take into account beyond just what's happening in the Pacific. All right, we're going to get into the mosh pit in a minute, but before that, we got a message from our sponsor, yep. and, and we're going to be talking about uh, some announcements in global warming versus climate change. And the meteor, uh, the uh, Perseid meteor. Perseids. Perseids. Yeah. Oh, Perseids. Mm -hmm. Perseids. <gasps> I've been pronouncing it wrong. All right, so hang on. We'll be right back. And we're back already. <laughs> so much okay. for that announcement. Go. <laughs> All right. It is live so, radio. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, just a reminder that we're here at Base Peak. Base Camp, and thank you, Joelle, for allowing us to be here today. Base Camp in Sister Bay, it's an awesome place to go when you come to Door County. Make sure you stop by. Um, also, you can find pretty much everything you want to know about Going Home with Tony on our website, www.goinghomewithtony.com. This includes how to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter, where we post all of our updates and podcasts. So as usual, we have some fabulous shows coming up. Better than this? No, it can't be as better <laughs> than this. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know Although how. Although I am looking forward to Dr. Oh, Dr. Fisher, but I'm not even going to talk about oh, that okay. one for I that's a secret for the future. Uh, it's, it's a teaser. It's a teaser. You ever heard of Dr. Helen Fisher? No. She's the. She's, fa she's Tony's like, favorite. She's like the rock star of anthropology. Anthropology. Yeah, oh, cool. Gonna, yeah, she's I mean, be I next. almost minored in anthropology. There you go. Oh, you yeah. have You're to check out Dr. Helen okay. Fisher. I think yeah. that's uh, October I mean, She's like 1st. the Mike Kaplan of <laughs> anthropology. Of anth okay. I mean, you know, like you're trying to predict the future. <laughs> yes. She's, she's trying to remember the past. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. So there's a, there's a synergy it's there. A yin and a yang. Yin, yin and a yang. Yang and a yang. You can be yin. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So as we mentioned last week, Tony and I have a huge event coming up in the next week. We're going to be first time grandparents, and the due date is right around the time of the August 20th show next Thursday. So, with the kind understanding of the head brewer, uh, Danny McMahon at Door County Brewing Company, we have postponed. That is an important. Show. Yeah, that was yeah. going. It's going to be a big show. So we postponed it until Thursday, September 24th, so that we are certain to be available. For for that show because mm -hmm. hopefully she's had her baby by then. Mm -hmm. She will be a very angry woman if she has not had her baby by September. We really right. appreciate her not having it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, we, yeah. we can be live today. I know. Yeah, we, I we put her on bed rest. We did for week. today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't you grounded your daughter. Move. No laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of a live show next Thursday, August 20th, we are pleased to be replaying one of our most popular episodes of the Going Home with Tony show. We'll be rebroadcasting the Living a Life Without Plastic episode. Oh, uh, Lauren. So, mm -mm. Uh, Jay Sinha. Oh. Life Without Plastic. Life Without Plastic. Yeah, so make sure you tune in to hear Life Without Plastic owner Jay Sinha tell us the small but important steps we can take each day to reduce the amount of plastic we use. Then on Thursday, August 27th, we are pleased to welcome architect Scott Rapp to the Hot Water 911 Boiler Room Studio. Scott is the principal in the well-known firm Kuklinski and Rapp Architects in Chicago. 
Scott will talk to us about the importance of having an architect on your team when you're designing a home, business, or workplace. Scott is passionate about the positive charge change that the power of design brings to you, and you'll want to hear about that passion on August 27th at 5 p.m. Okay, so. Carry on. Walking, uh, just coming into our live studio audience, um, inventor, filmmaker, um, Renaissance man. Renaissance man. Uh, He's been called a tinkerer. A tinkerer. Mm -hmm. uh, movie maker, uh, Tim Erskine. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, by the way, Joel, yeah. um, it, more than a restaurateur, is also an actor. He's an actor. Because he was also in the sought movie. Sought after. I think sought, he's sought after. after. Actor. People here might want his autograph yeah. after this. And he yeah. passes out croissants. So Croissant. you, you're going to have to see the movie, and the name of the movie is? The Emissary. And when is, when is the Emissary going to be? It's going to be playing at the Skyway Drive-In in, in Door, Door County. What on city September, is that? That's Fish Creek. Fish Creek. Mm -hmm, okay. On September 10th. And then for our Chicago listeners, mm -hmm. it, when's it going to be in Chicago? We don't know for sure yet, but it's going to be at the Patio Theater in and, Chicago. And where is that located? On Irving Park. And Central? Sort of. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, that's, um, it's really, a, it's a, it's a great for the whole family oh, science fiction yep. love story. Yep. yep. So, all right. So I know uh, Tim in a world <laughs> where the emissary <laughs> lives in Door County. Awesome. I just love doing it. And, and Tim and Mike got along really well. They were talking a lot about that. They they seem to speak yeah. the same language. Oh. Mike can media. speak any language. But it was well, but last night you heard him asking for orange Bulgarian. Yeah. yeah. It, last night it was the language between, of. Astronomy. Yeah, yeah. He was looking for. The I'm not fluent in astronomy. The, there, there were. We were well, let's talk about last night. Where yeah. did we go? We went to Newport Park State or Newport State Park to watch the Perseids. Perseids mm -hmm. meteor shower. And how many did we see? Oh, quite a few. A couple 20. dozen. Yeah, yeah. 20, yeah. Mm -hmm. twenty. And um, what is it that you know? So when we're looking at meteors, um, and I'm not talking about carnivores. I'm talking meteors. about meteors. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're looking at a veggie burger, um, is it that the meteor's flying through space or we're flying through it? And um, how does that, you know, how does that it's all both. It's both? Meteors are created by debris left behind by comets. In this case, the uh, comet that produces the annual Perseid meteors is called Swift Tuttle. Um, Tuttle? Tuttle. Mm -hmm. Tuttle. And these comets, as they get close to the sun, start to break apart. They vaporize and leave behind little pieces. Most of them are just the size of a grain of sand. Amazing. And when the Earth Amazing. goes around the sun, uh, passes through that same debris field, the Earth is moving. Those little bits of rock are also you know, orbiting the sun as well. But we come into contact with that. And then as these particles interact with the Earth's atmosphere, uh, friction causes them to heat up and create that blazing trail of light that we enjoyed last night going across the sky a whole bunch and of And the times. universe is full of them, or? Well, mean, the solar system is. So, so uh, there are several major meteor showers What was the name of the uh, mission to Pluto, the telescope, Tim? The yeah, Horizons? Yeah, the hori New Horizons. Yeah, New Horizons. New Horizons. Mm -hmm. If that uh, telescope had hit a grain of sand. Game over. Uh, well, depends on how big it, it was. It, it could be a catastrophic because of the velocity that they're they're going. You know, it's it's mass times velocity, and even if you have a small thing out there that's moving at twenty thousand miles per hour, uh, you can have catastrophic yeah. problems. So it's like the mosquito on my windshield. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For him, for him, it was dead. not a good day. No. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. For me, it's another car wash. It's a, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a windshield wipe. What are you going to do? Yeah. swipe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So that was what we were doing last night. It's on again tonight. Yeah, it won't be. Last night was the peak. Uh, the 12th and 13th in the mornings between generally midnight and 4 a.m., mm -hmm. the, the peak times. But they're well worth going yeah, to see. I, it. If the skies are uh, clear as they are pretty much out there right now in the wake of those storms that came through here, mm -hmm. well, you should still be able to see quite a few. And we actually saw the Milky Way last night. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we had some high clouds to fight, so it mm -hmm. wasn't the, the perfectly pristinely clear but skies. It was, still great. Yeah, it was really yeah, incredible. It was, it was nice. All right, so uh, Mike Kaplan, uh, entrepreneur. Astronomer, photographer, meteorologist. And bon vivant. Bon and vivant. Bon vivant. <laughs> bon vivant. Climate change or global warming? 
Uh, right now, the the preferred term is climate change. Climate change. Yeah, I think that is seems that the, to be the, the is that the way phrase. to agree to disagree. It's probably the path of least resistance for uh, the advocates of of that particular. Mm -hmm. uh, but cause. hasn't the Earth always been doing climate change? <coughs> yes, exactly. Aha! Yes. Here we have it. Yes. Tim, get the gloves out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does the science say? Are we burning too much carbon? Is it really? Can There's we an awful lot of science that points to a uh, no arguing that there have been particularly globally um, temperatures have been rising, uh, you know, in the past few decades. Ever since we've been recording, that has that has helped. But we also we have proxy data to go back millions and even billions of years to look at the Earth's record and. For more than 90% of Earth's history, it's been significantly warmer than it is now. So Al Gore wasn't that far off the mark when he did Inconvenient Truth. Um, I'm putting words in your mouth. You know, it, my, here's, I'm going to sum up my opinion. The ground that you and I are sitting on right now, mm -hmm. 15,000 years ago, there was a sheet of ice mm -hmm. about a mile thick. Mm -hmm. Where did it go? Global warming. Climate change. It's gone, right? Was there an anthropogenic contribution to Ooh, its warring? Yeah. yeah. I'm not giving you an issue with that means. Yeah. No. <laughs> you act like it, you know. It, 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 it melted by other processes. Uh, there is still, uh, I think, room for healthy debate as to how much contribution man's uh, burning of fossil fuels, the carbon dioxide contribution to global warming. I think there's still room for debate on that. Um, is it just generally prudent to reduce CO2 emissions? I, I think most people would say yes, as long as it doesn't involve dismantling uh, the world's economy in order to do it. Uh, so you, you so how, how do we go about trying to affect any change? Uh, would the, the things that we do have any impact on the right. climate is it, process. Is the horse too far out of the barn? It, you don't know. You well, don't know. The Obama administration has just signed into law a reduction of coal emissions by 32% by 2030. Mm -hmm. Too little, too late? Will ask me in 2031. And you'll be uh, here. In I, 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 I'll be here in Door County. <laughs> you won't be leaving. Go, go, going home with Tony. <laughs> you'll be at the ISO bar in, in, a, the, in a walker. Doing the follow-up show. <laughs> well, one of, one of your uh, gurus in your industry, uh, Professor Mike Mann from Penn State Penn University, State, yeah. uh, wrote a book called Dire Predictions. Um, is the uh, is it that dire? I mean, are we on the the precipice? of burning ourselves out uh, in, in Tim and Holly's words are we going to be melting lead on our back porch? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, not, not in the immediate future. Uh, you know, I, who, who's to say that something else might happen 20 years from now that undoes the, the warming that's taking place. Well, it's interesting you say that because there was a thing on the internet, and if it's on the internet, it's you know. It's right. got to be right. true. true. <laughs> I believe it. Verifiable. Okay. And uh, Betty White is still dead. <laughs> she dies every day, I tell yeah, you. So, um, that the, the sun actually has a predictable heartbeat. Yeah, the so-called Milankovitch cycles. That's what you were going to say, wasn't it? Milankovitch? Yeah. Is he Lithuanian? <laughs> <laughs> By marriage. By marriage. Uh, so in 2030, 15 years from now, we will go through the ice age that they did in England when England... When the Thames froze yeah. over. Believe it or not. Do you believe it? I'm asking you. I, you first. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with no. No. <clears throat> I'm going not to go all, with huh? no. Um... A fabulously intelligent and uh, wonderful uh, ombudsman for astronomy and science in general, Carl Sagan, oh, yeah. uh, during the Billions. Gulf War, uh, famously professed and predicted that the uh, oil fires that were set by Saddam Hussein mm -hmm. in Kuwait were and going put out by Red Adair. Yes, that's right. We're going oh, to they're... we're going to contribute to a, a huge climate catastrophe mm -hmm. because the amount of garbage that mm -hmm. was going up in the air. Well, it mm -hmm. didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And he had wonderful scientific models and mm -hmm. charts that were computer generated to mm -hmm. show this is what's going to happen. And he'd go on with Ted Koppel and say, hey, Ted, this is all of this stuff going on, and it didn't happen. 
and he had wonderful science behind him, and it failed. So there, there are computer models. Computer models can mm -hmm. be wrong. Mm -hmm. As you found out. Yes. 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 Right. So get, getting back into the specifics of weather, I mean, we hear words like Doppler radar, radar. Mm -hmm. Claudia said isobars. Mm -hmm. I'll let Laura field this one. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> Make it easy, please. <laughs> <laughs> the sun burns off the fog. <laughs> how was the, sele that, how was the selection in. up at uh, Econo Sport? Uh, uh, e ecology, ecology Sports. Sports. Ecology Sports. <laughs> yes. Was it nice? nice. Yeah. It was very good. Okay, so we recommend after going to base camp for your oh, uh, always, dessert. Always, always walk upstairs. <laughs> you may, you should probably do it before and after. Yeah, I think. really. Yeah. I think so too. Well, we are, it, this is the Going Home with Tony show. Our live phone number is 619-924-0952. We're with Mike and Laura Kaplan, famous uh, entrepreneurial family of meteorology, astronomy, and photography. Yes. So what are your other passions, Mike? That ought to be about enough. Uh, we, we like and racing. cars. Yeah, racing we, do like, cars. we do like cars. Wait, we, we like our birds, Dodge Viper. Birds. We like birds. Yeah. Insects. So his son called I saw your, your walking, walking, stick. walking <laughs> stick. Yes, I saw that lovely picture on Facebook today. Yes. Yeah. But so let's start with the short list. What don't you do? Cleaning. Housework. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I got to tell you, time? Tony, you would be so proud of Laura because yeah. she is extreme. Anything breaks in our house, she knows how to fix it. Her, her oh, I saw her video on uh, repairing the, the deck. deck. Yes, yes. She she just, uh, you know, her dad uh, was an iron worker. Her two brothers are iron workers. I think that they spent a good deal of time mm -hmm. uh, educating her on how to fix stuff. So, I mean, if the, if the toilet goes haywire, she's there. If the internet goes down, she knows how to take care. So, uh, I just... So, you really are a fake. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I do so very little. Okay. I just want to get that in the open here because, you know, we're putting you on You know, why did you say charlatan? Look that sounds here. so much more... Charlatan. I'm a charlatan. I'm not a fake. I'm a charlatan. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to understand these things. I, yeah. want, I want them to talk about Kaplan Studios photography. Yeah, Tell uh, us about that. When I was a young lad, my first job was uh, working as the weight guesser at uh, what was then Marriott's Great America in Gurney. Oh, that's funny. So I was the amazing Alfredo. <laughs> and people would pay a dollar. I think your mother was La Nina. <laughs> <laughs> people would come up and they would pay a dollar and I'd say, I'll guess your age within two years, weight within three pounds. We had a great big Toledo You've scale. You've been predicting all your life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or your month of birth within two. And so people will ask me, well, how, how often did you win? And I said, every single time. What? Yes. If, if uh, Claudia comes up and gives me a dollar and says, guess my month of birth, and I say, I'll just get July. When's your birth month? August. All right, I'm one off. You just lost. You've given me a dollar. Oh, okay? so you that's lose. how you win. Okay, but, but wait. <laughs> now let's say that I guessed February, okay. okay? And you say, I'm sorry, my birthday is in August. I'm like, oh, I'm six months off. You're the winner. Go take a prize. You've given me a dollar. I, now on behalf of the fine folks at Marriott Corporation, <laughs> are giving you a 38 cent piece of you know what mm. so you tell me who won that business arrangement i see so, so is weather kind of like that <laughs> yes it is yes, you it know is. we listen to the commercial to find right. out what not the weather yeah. is going to be like tomorrow okay like with my very first here. paycheck as the amazing alfredo i went to the local uh, hawthorne camera store and i bought a minolta xg7 camera i wanted to take some pictures so i spent uh every day that summer going into the park even on my days off i take pictures of the people that i worked with and the rides and just go out and I love developing having the film developed so I got into photography then then I kind of got away from it when my son was born in the late 80s I said yeah, I really want to take pictures and get back in so I bought a, a kind of a starter digital camera and then I Brownie got festive? not quite okay. <laughs> and I got into it again and um, Laura uh, when she came on board with the program uh, we decided to uh, we were taking a lot of pictures of nature, mm -hmm. and somebody approached me and said, uh, you know, I can probably get your prints being sold at the Chicago Botanic Garden and the Morton Arboretum if you go out there nice. and take some pictures. So we kind of started a little cottage industry. Of, you know, Laura would print up the cards mm -hmm. and they'd sell a handful of them at, at shows and things at the Garden and the Arboretum and made like $9 for a year. And so it was like, okay. But people started saying, hey, Mike, we see you take pictures of plants. You ever take any pictures of families? Like, okay, I'll do that. So then being the obsessive compulsive person that I am, I tried to teach myself 
as much as humanly possible, mm-hmm. taking workshops, reading mm-hmm. magazines, podcasts, you name it. And you still do. And I still mm-hmm. do that mm-hmm. because it's an evolving it process. Is evolving. I, Passion. Yeah. And so I, I, whatever I think I know now mm-hmm. is not going to be as much as I know tomorrow. Right. So uh, we embarked on an uh, uh, actual side business that we've had much more time to devote mm-hmm. to lately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you know, we branched out into weddings and a couple just in the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, and we really enjoy it. Laura's turned into a terrific photographer. We'll go somewhere uh, out west and I'll be taking pictures of a mountain range mm-hmm. or something you know, very scenic with the sky. And Laura. I take the pictures of the trash on the ground. Uh-huh. Or Artsy stuff. Whatever. Yeah. Because Actually, I don't want to take the same picture he has because right. mine will definitely be way better than his. <laughs> and you don't want to show him up. That's you exactly are an it. awesome wife. See? I'm yeah. glad to see so there's giving. no competition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. But so she's I, very creative, yeah, with, the, with yeah. these pictures of garbage or whatever mm-hmm. she's taking. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just make them into something completely different. Cool. And then you can guess, what is that? Yeah. So have you guys done weddings together? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So any catastrophes? Like, no. when she says, I don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> she, not yet. No, not I mean, yet. I mean, uh-huh. it, uh, any dr- drunken brawls that you were able to get some good pictures? Darn it, of? no. no th- th- there have been some uh, you know, folks who've been overserved, people. but but so no, no Irish no weddings. Uh, yes, one of the ones we did was Irish. Absolutely, it was wonderful. They had a they fabulous were, time, and they were behaved. They were they behaved. Were. They were behaved and an awful lot of fun. No kidding. And yeah. some can probably dance. Blind, like with their eyes closed, intoxicated. They're, yeah, we saw that. Professionals. Practice, a lot of yeah. practice. They are professionals. A lot of like, practice. Is that yeah. woman's eyes? No, yeah. no, she Should is. Should somebody be there to catch her? <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do different? I mean, we've all been to a wedding. There's always been a photographer, and everybody's sitting at the table, and he says, okay, I'd like to get a table picture, and everybody puts their arm around each other, and yeah. yes. you know, they scrunch in. I mean, are you still doing that kind of stuff? Or yes. It's still the... <laughs> the, the you have to do yeah, that. The things you have to What changed. the client yeah. wants yeah. to do. The garter belt picture. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The, yes. Ca- the cake smearing in the face picture. Oh, we haven't there done was that. no cake smearing. The, the, I think that's been eliminated. Yeah. I think, in the, life. Um, the what was interesting about the Who's Irish. There, who here has had cake smeared in their face? No. No. Okay. No, we didn't do that. Who here threw? Oh, we had one cake smear, and any garter belts. <laughs> I'm wearing one now. Then or now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim. <laughs> Very attractive. <laughs> He's hiking those shorts up even more. Yeah. Uh, so you, you haven't had any, I mean, how long have you been doing weddings? So? Uh, just this summer. Oh, just so summer. there's still time. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yes. <laughs> there's always time. Yeah. I mean, w- that would have to be an awfully embarrassing, but yet unbelievably exciting oh, time, <laughs> you know, when uh, you have one of those... Those moments you know, that you YouTube capture. Moments. Yeah, right. Well, right. the groom at the Irish wedding that we had, even though it's mainly a Scottish tradition, he wore a kilt and all of his uh, groomsmen wore kilts. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. um, during, the garter, during the garter removal ceremony, uh, his, his bride no. you know, hiked up the kilt yeah. oh. a little bit for a full booty view. <laughs> uh, so it, it, that, was a, that was fun. We, yeah. we, well, we did he look good in a kilt? Laura. I mean, certain uh, men. When it was worn correctly, yes. When he yeah. was flashing things, no. <laughs> <Not too bad. laughs> I mean, certain things men just shouldn't flash, and their derriere is in a kilt. It's probably one. It's of a them. look. Derriere in a kilt. That was my second Although album. Although one of the ring, one of the ring bearers was like three wearing, maybe two wearing a diaper, and oh, it, yeah. you know he was that cute. was cute. That you was know, cute. when he would Patrick flash with his yeah. diaper show. Have you ever had one where the dog brings the ring in, or no, no? Okay, we uh-huh. had one like that, didn't we? Yeah, that was our nephew. Nephew's mm-hmm. wedding, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, where, what's the future? What are you going to? What are you guys? Up well, to? the 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 hope is that one of the other uh, stations in Chicago will have use for a crafty veteran for some uh, you know work in the late innings. They'd so be lucky. Are, are you hearing yeah. that, <laughs> Tommy Skilling? <laughs> They'd be Hello. lucky. So we're we're working on that, and there's some hopeful signs. And uh, in the meantime, we're continuing to be aggressive with the Facebook presence and mm-hmm. uh, doing a lot of our photography. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then uh, we're thinking about doing uh, a radio show. It's going to be called "Going Home with Mike and Laura." <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were taking me home. <laughs> uh, honey, can you pull this plug? <laughs> That's you know. good. I like that. Yeah, I was just Mike gonna like tell them where people could find him, but yeah. I'm not so sure no. now. <laughs> I think it's Mike Kaplan with a K. <laughs> <laughs> so you can Zing. find yeah, yeah, you can find the uh, Facebook media meteorologist on Facebook at Mike Kaplan Meteorologist and on Twitter 
at M Kaplan with a C weather mm-hmm. at M Kaplan with weather. And I think we're going to have Mike and Laura in as a regular meteorological pr- uh, prediction pr- prognosticator. Pro- prognosticator. Yeah, the vulnerable and venerable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike and Laura. What are so we're going to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't get the memo. <coughs> So yeah, I'd be happy to help you out. And we're also yeah. going to be having a contest. It's called I'm Smarter Than Mike Kaplan. Yeah. So we're going to be passing out free T-shirts. So when Mike <laughs> Kaplan, uh, when you do better with your prediction than Mike Kaplan does, you then you get a uh, Mike, I'm smarter than the Mike, Mike Kaplan, Kaplan T-shirt. t-shirt. Oh. Does it have to be weather or can it be a prediction about, and you know, yeah, anything? Yeah. Okay. Generally being smarter <laughs> yeah. or just being a better guesser. Guesser, guesser yeah. So wait... Uh, birth uh, and, um, and age, age. Yeah. And, age, and, age. Yeah. and you can also go to horoscopes.com and uh, yeah, right. we'll predict that also <laughs> well it's been a great hour it thank you very much my Michael pleasure Laura, thank, you thank, you. thank you both thank you both and um, we look forward to hearing from you guys in the near future yeah. and we'll then, be here and next Thursday is a replay of Life Without Plastic and the following week is Scott Rapp architect and oh, uh, that's yeah. right. and, and then, then Dr. Helen Fisher in October in October okay thank yeah. you very much have thank a great you. week and we will thank you everybody who came here today thank right. you and thank you Joelle thank you